Hi everyone, welcome back. We are on to our fourth English lesson already. So let's have a look and see what we're going to be doing today. Let me share my screen and we can have a little look. So this is our last session on the Great K-pop Tree. We're moving on to a different text tomorrow. And today we are going to continue to think about expanded noun phrases. And we're going to continue to think about our punctuation of our speech. And we're going to think about something extra in there today. And we're going to be using one of the pictures from the Great K-pop Tree as a stimulus for our writing. So we're going to write a slightly different part to the story. So that's the plan for today. As usual, you're going to need a pen or pencil for your writing. You're going to need a different colour to do your editing if you can. And then some lined paper or your English or literacy book. Okay, if you haven't got those things, go and press pause and go and get them. If you have, we're going to start with our game. So same game as yesterday. We're going to have another go at synonyms for said. So words that we can use instead of said. And some of those might be those animal sounds like hissed. And I'm going to give you 45 minutes on the clock again today. And I want to see if you can maybe have some different ones from yesterday. And maybe you could have a few more than you managed yesterday. So are you ready? Let me get my pen ready, my board ready. On your marks, get set, go. Goodness me, that goes quickly, doesn't it? I'm just going to finish the one I'm on. If you've already started one, you can finish that one. Okay, let's have a look and see what we've got. So let me stop sharing the screen for a second so you can see mine a bit bigger. Here we go. So I have got added. So that would be one where somebody else had said something and you were adding more information to what they'd already said. I've got blurted. And blurted is where you kind of have a sudden burst of something you have to say because you feel so strongly about it. So we've got the word blurted. We've got the word begged. So the animals could have been begging the man not to uh, cut the tree down. I've got demanded. So that's really insisting that you definitely want him to do something. Threatened. So you might be feeling so angry that you're saying something unkind to another person. You're threatening them. I've got insisted. So again, that's when you're feeling really strongly about something, you insist that it's got to happen. And that's another good word that we could have used when we're talking about the way the animals are talking to the man. I've got pleaded, so that's a bit like begged, where you're desperate to get what you want. Chorus. So chorus is a good one, perhaps if we're thinking about the birds. And also, if you're thinking about more than one person talking at a time, so if they're all saying it at the same time, you might use the word chorus. Then we've got roared. And mumbled. So how many did I get today? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, ten. That's my best score yet. Ten. I managed to get ten today. Don't worry. See, if you might have got better than you did yesterday. Don't worry if you didn't. If you've got a couple of new ones that you've never used before on your list, that's really good. So I'm more than happy today if you want to borrow some of the words that I put on the board when you're doing your writing. Because it's really good to add extra new words into your vocabulary that perhaps you haven't used before. So we're here, we've got added, flirted, begged, demanded, threatened, insisted, pleaded, chorused, roared and mumbled. If you really like any of those words, you can press pause for a second and add those in, a diff in your editing colour to your list. And then perhaps you'll be able to use them during your piece of writing today because we're going to be using lots of synonyms for said today in our writing. So that's the plan. Here we go. So today... Let's have a look and see what we're going to be doing. So we've done our game with synonyms for said. What are we actually covering today? Well, we're going to be thinking about a piece of writing today. And in our piece of writing, we are going to be using this picture to help us. Okay, so this picture is from the actual great cake tree. It's from the part where the man 
wakes up. Okay, so it says on the actual page, the man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child and all around him staring were the creatures who depended upon the great kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. So we're going to have a think today about putting together a part of the book that's not actually there. So in our book, the animals don't say anything once the man has woken up. But I want you to imagine that the animals are feeling so strongly about the fact that they don't want the man to chop down the tree that they decide once he wakes up, rather than running away and scattering, they're gonna stay there and they're gonna try and really reinforce the messages that they want him to think about. So I would like you to pick four of the animals, okay? So you've got lots and lots of different animals on here. Choose your favorite four. Okay, and I want you to write them across your page. So you've got one, and then the next, and then the next, and then the next. I'll show you what I mean on my page. So you're going to have one at the top here. So you might choose the sloth. You might write that here. And then you might choose the anteater, and so on. And you're going to write them across your page, okay? like that. If you've got particularly big handwriting, you might want to write two across the page and then leave a bit of a gap and write the other two. It's up to you. But the idea is that we're going to use that to do a little bit of a plan today under each of those animals, okay? So if we go all the way around, we'll just have a quick check of which of the animals are. So we've got Cock of the Rock, which is the bird over in the corner. We've got the Jaguar here. We've got the Toucan. We've got the Scarlet Macaw down here. We've got a mother and a baby tapir. We've got the squirrel monkey hiding in the bushes there. We've got an anteater. We've got a rather strange creature called a kinkajou, which is over here that you might be able to find out some extra information about. We have the tree porcupines, an ocelot, which is another big cat. We have a coati, a moustache tamarind, and the sloth over here. So pick your four animals. If you'd like to, you can stop your, the video at this point and you can go and have a little research online if you've got access to the internet and see what you can find out about those animals. So that will really help you in your work today. If not, don't worry, just use the picture and we're going to describe some of these animals. So in our plan now, we're going to produce some words to describe each of those animals because one of the things we want to include again today is expanded noun phrases. So what I'd like you to do now Okay, it's to press pause in a second when I finish talking and under each animal I want you to think of some descriptions that you can use for that animal to make your expanded noun phrase. Okay, so you might decide just to have two adjectives and your noun, so you might have a determiner, two adjectives and your noun. So you might talk about the slow moving furry sloth, and don't forget that comma between those two adjectives. Or you might be able to add a prepositional phrase on the end of your noun phrase. So you might find that you can have, um, be talking about an animal with tiny black eyes. So you might be able to add that onto the end of your description. So I want you to think about now how you're going to describe each of the four animals that you have chosen. So you don't need to write sentences, just under each word, you're going to write a few descriptions. So you might think of three or four adjectives that might be useful to use and you might be able to think of a prepositional phrase. So when you're thinking of adjectives, you might be thinking about the colour, so you might talk about the young sloth or the young ocelot, the colour of the animal, the size, the appearance, how it's feeling, so it might be the furious um, leopard, and its personality, anything you know about that character. Okay, try not to have two words, two adjectives before the noun that describe the same thing. Try and vary them a little bit. And if you can manage to use one of those prepositions on the page as well, to add in an extra prepositional phrase to add even more information, that would be brilliant. Okay, so press pause now and just make a few notes under each of those four animals about how you want to, to put those in your writing. Okay, so expanded noun phrases and with a possible prepositional phrase on the end. Have a go at doing that now for me. So press pause and off you go. Right, hopefully you've managed that. Hopefully you've got some descriptions underneath. I'm not gonna go through that now because I think we've had lots of practice of noun phrases. So I'm hoping you've managed to do that really well. Now I'm gonna think about what else is gonna go into our writing. So the other thing that's gonna go into our writing is some speech again. Because I want the animals to talk, those four animals to talk to the man. And possibly the man might talk back. So we're going to need to use the same things we talked about when we did our speech before. So we're gonna to need to make sure we've remembered the inverted commas. 
So the 66 at the beginning and the 99 at the end. We're going to need to remember that reported clause and hopefully you've got a whole variety of synonyms for said that you used at the beginning of the game today that you'll be able to include in your writing. We are going to need to make sure we've got that pause before each speech mark. So remember at the end of the speech, we'll need a comma or a question mark or an exclamation mark before we close the speech marks and remembering a pause before we open the speech marks as well. We are going to make sure that we've got those capital letters where we need them. And finally, we're going to do one extra thing today. So when we did our writing yesterday, there was only one character talking. It was just one animal. Now we've got four animals and possibly the man as well. So we need to think about another rule that goes with punctuating speech, which is new line, new speaker. So I'm going to have a quick look at that now before we start our piece of writing. So let me stop sharing my screen for a minute and let's make sure that you're nice and big. Okay, so we're thinking new line, new speaker now. So I have written the first line that I want to have. So I've decided the Jaguar is pretty cross about the whole idea of this tree coming down. And I've written, I will have to consider attacking you if you don't rethink your plan, threaten the Jaguar angrily. Okay, now I want the man to respond to that. So he's pretty surprised with this, but I'm not gonna start my line here. Okay, because it's a new speaker, so it's new line. So even though I haven't finished that line, I'm going to start a new line. And I'm going to write, he's going to be pretty desperate, this man, faced with a Jaguar. So I'm going to write, please don't. I'm going to write, please don't harm me. Full stop. I am only trying to do my job. And then I need to pause again. So I'm gonna put my comma in here because that's the end of the sentence, but I haven't done my reported clause yet. And then I'm gonna write begged. He's really asking, begged the man. And I might even say what he did. So maybe he takes a step backwards. Beg the man stepping away. So he might step away from the leopard. Okay, so we've remembered again. We've got our 66 and our 99s. Here we go. We've got pauses before each one. Pause here. We've got a pause here because we've got the full stop before it. And we've remembered our reported clauses. So we've got threaten the Jaguar and we've got begged the man, and we've remembered to start a new line for a new speaker. So they're the, the key things I want to see in your dialogue today. So let me run through what your piece of writing is gonna look like with you now. And then the, for the rest of the lesson, you're gonna get started and really get that piece of writing done so that at the end of the lesson, you can come back to me and we can go through and just double check you've done everything you need to do. So let's have a look at what we're going to be expecting from this piece of writing. So you will need to include expanded noun phrases to help describe the scene that greets the man as he wakes up. So he's going to wake up and he's going to see this scene of animals. You're going to focus on those four animals that you are going to use in your dialogue. But you might want to talk about the whole scene altogether to start off with. So you might look around him and you might describe the scene that he sees as he wakes. And that would be really good place to use those expanded noun phrases. Then you're going to get at least four animals to talk directly to the man. So they might say things like, how would you like it if someone destroyed your house? Or it's really important that we protect our environment and give them all sorts of reasons why he shouldn't chop down that tree. Sometimes he might answer them back, so he might speak as well. So you might need to punctuate his dialogue as well. Sometimes he might just move away from them or he might turn away and start to walk off. You can decide what reaction he has to them. And then you're gonna to need to make sure that punctuation of speech is really perfect, okay? And you're gonna use that picture to help you. And um, Splash has got a little clue for you. He says, you might want to start your piece of writing. So if you're one of those people who thinks, oh, I can never know how to start my writing, you might just steal the, the opening sentence from that page, which is the man awoke with a start. So you can, you can feel him going, oh my goodness, as he wakes up, can't you? 
So he might say something to start off with, or you might go straight into your description of the scene. So they're the things that we're thinking about today. So you're going to spend the rest of the session now getting that piece of writing done, okay, until the point where the man walks away from the animals, okay, and goes off and we then know what happens because he decides not to uh, actually cut down the tree, doesn't he? So you're going to write that whole thing with your expanded noun phrases and your punctuation of dialogue. And when you've done that, you can come back to me briefly and we'll just check through your piece of work and edit anything that we need to do, okay? So you might want to rewind the video and look at the pictures again. I'm gonna put the picture back up on the screen right now. Let's go back to that picture. That might help you. So we're gonna go back to that picture. So that's the scene that you're gonna be writing about. If you want to, you can rewind a little bit and go back to that list of things, but we're gonna come back to that list of things again at the end, okay? So the man awakes and then we see this scene in front of us, okay? So the man awoke with a start is the sentence you can use if you want to. Okay, off you go. Well done for coming back. Hopefully that means you finished that entire section of your story. So let's just check before we totally finish for today that you've actually remembered all those things. So the first thing I want you to do with your editing pen, so I've got a purple today, you might choose to have a red or a green, whichever colour pen you want, is to go through and see if you can underline some of those expanded noun phrases. So you might have some determinate, adjective, adjective nouns in there, like the slow moving, silky sloth, um, with making sure you've got a comma between the two adjectives. Okay, so go back and do that now. Underline, press pause and underline each of those expanded noun phrases for me. Right, the second thing I want you to make sure is that you have got your punctuation of dialogue correct. Okay, so we need to make sure if you've left out a pause, let's imagine I didn't remember that comma in there, that you use your colour pen and go, right, what kind of pause should go here? Should I have a question mark? Should I have an exclamation mark? And in this one, it's a comma, so I'm going to pop that in. If you've forgotten to start a new line for the new speaker, then you can use uh, two slanted lines. So, for instance, if I thought actually I need a space, um, this should have been in the start of a new line, I can put two lines in here to show that I want to start a new line. Okay, so if you've forgotten to start a new line for a new speaker, you can go in and add that in. Okay, and make sure you've got all those speech punctuation and make sure that you've got a reported clause where you need it. So go and check that now, press pause again, go and check for that. And then finally, the last thing to check for today is have you had four animals talking and does the man respond to them? So go in and have a look at that. Is there any response from the man? So does he just hold his hands over his head because he's so worried about what he's doing? Or does he stop and just think for a second? Or does he start to turn away from the animal? So how is the man reacting to each animal talking? And then finally, just check right at the end that you've got your man leaving that scene and finishing, okay? And when you've done all of that, you have finished. You've done a fantastic job. So that was our last session of the great K-pop tree. If I go back to sharing my presentation with you for a second, uh, we are going to have a look at what we're going to do tomorrow. So it's a new text tomorrow. These are all the things we've covered today. This is what we're going to be looking at tomorrow. So we are going to be looking at poetry tomorrow. And we're looking at a poem from a book called Wild World. And it's all about different habitats. And one of the habitats it writes about is a rainforest. So it's perfect for us. And we're going to be interpreting and analysing that poem. And we're going to be looking for expanded noun phrases. And we're going to have a go tomorrow at quick game that involves us using antonyms. So we've been doing quite a lot of work on synonyms, synonyms for said, which are words that mean the same thing. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking at antonyms and antonyms are opposites. So we're going to be using words that are the opposite of each other. And that's what we're going to do tomorrow. So I will see you tomorrow. Well done. Great job today, everybody. And have a lovely day. And I will see you tomorrow for our next lesson of poetry. Bye for now.